G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Sunday afternoon here in Australia and obviously Sunday morning, things have, you know, sort of sorted themselves out with the US elections uh, and there's some interesting news on a few different counts. So here is one that I found really interesting. 300 ETH sale caps wild week for Axie Infinity. The record-breaking sale is a cherry on top of Axie Infinity's strong week and even stronger year. So this is to do with NFTs and, you know, everyone was talking about DeFi was a bubble and it's going to pop and obviously we've had this heavy retracement but it wasn't just DeFi, it was a lot of projects. I think NFTs are going to do exactly the same. Now, I'm not saying NFTs are a bad investment or anything. I'm just saying I think they're probably a little bit overhyped and overpriced at the moment uh, and they're going to substantially reduce at some time in the future. But look, long term, who knows what they're going to be worth. They could be worth, you know, an absolute mozza. But this story goes to show. So while a rally in the latter half of the week saw major names across the decentralized finance ecosystem climb upwards of 100 percent, Axie Infinity, the Pokemon inspired NFT game, carried the banner for the NFT space, capping off a wild week of progress with a record breaking 300 Ether, roughly $130,000 sale. The eye-popping expensive Axie, the NFT-backed critters used to play the battle uh, in the Axie Infinity game, is named Angel and is one of 19 triple mystic Axies currently in existence. Angel was sold on Friday on NFT Marketplace OpenSea, where it was then almost immediately relisted for a staggering 666 Ether. So that's over 250000 Now, it'll be interesting to find out if someone bought that uh, yeah, again, that's what I mean. Things are just in the hype phase at the moment. At some stage, they're going to likely pull back. Now, there is some good NFT stuff out there. I just don't know if the game kind of stuff and the kind of cartoony sort of stuff is really where the big money is going to be made. I think it's more real artists now doing digital work where the big money is going to be made. But look, it's not to say these can't be worth more money in the future. But again, you know... Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. So the sale topped a strong week for the game, which was filled with updates and news. Among the highlights were a live streamed, I hope I say this right, the last Lunasian tournament, a collaboration with DeFi lending protocol Aave on a limited edition NFT set and a breach of 9,000 monthly active users. So even DeFi is getting into the NFT space. It's the thing at the moment. And this is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you want to flip some stuff, it might be uh, an opportunity, not financial advice, just a personal opinion. But just be careful that, you know, unless you're flipping it really, really quick, it's possible that there's going to be a retracement on a lot of this stuff at some t stage in the future. Again, as I just said, you know, any real artists who are getting out there and, you know, making real digital art, that stuff may be worth a lot in the future, but you know, some of these things, it's hard to say. You know, they're a bit of a fad at the moment, uh, and whether that'll last or not, who knows. But I mean, look, to flip it for 250,000, geez, I'd love to get on uh, OpenSea and see if it's actually sold for that. Uh, I mean, it could still be sitting there, who knows, but <laughs> that's, you know, that's one way to flip something, and I'm sure they might be open to offers uh, for a lot less, but still a lot more than what they paid. So, again, this is cryptocurrencies, though, uh, friends, and the digital world that we're moving into. You know, people will be doing stuff like this, buying things and then trying to flip them really quick. You know, people do it on eBay and other sites already. This is just the new version of that. Now, U.S. election. So... Finally, there's, you know, somewhat of a result. People are saying Joe Biden has won. Uh, President Trump uh, is not giving up uh, his, you know, presidency just yet, but it looks like the results are in and that he's won at the moment. And uh, first ever female, uh, second in charge. So that's something interesting. Now, this could drag on for weeks, though. There's no guarantee that this is on. And if President Trump really wants to dig his heels in, you know, this could play out for months and months and months. This could go into next year. Who knows what's going to happen? We'll have to wait and see. But if it's not sorted soon, I just see there being a lot of volatility in the market. There'll be a lot of up and down. Uh, to say that it's going to go down more than it's going to go up or that it's going to go up more than it's going to go down is really hard to say. But I think 
the markets will do a lot better once they have a definitive sort of outcome. I think at the moment uh, it's going to be pretty hectic and all over the place. Uh, yeah, and we'll have to wait and see. Could could be completely wrong, but that's just what I think it's going to be. And, and that'll be within all markets. It'll be all over the place. And particularly as further news comes out and if there's talk of... Um, you know, voter scams and things like that. And I've already read stuff online that, you know, President Trump is saying, you know, yeah, there's been voter fraud and all the rest of it. So watch this space. We'll have to wait and see. It could be extremely hectic for a number of weeks, if not a number of months. You know, hopefully it sorts itself out uh, and doesn't take that long. But at the moment, uh, very chaotic. Uh, and, you know, coronavirus is exploding over in the US at the moment. Uh, it's the numbers are really high that's just not making the news so much anymore uh and other places around the world actually i mean they're going back into second lockdowns and things like that so things could be quite volatile for some time but who knows time will tell now here's another very interesting one 39 firms have applied to offer crypto services under new regulations say it's the dutch central bank and this is happening all over the world at the moment this is not just a u.s thing and not just kind of uh, a UK thing or you know England sort of thing this is everywhere all banks are starting to get on board this is happening worldwide uh, and it's things like this that makes me think we're more likely to go up there'll still be some severe volatility I think but I think generally uh, things will be on the up for some time I don't think there's going to be too much sort of downside in the in the next Oh, let's say until Bitcoin gets to around about 25, 35,000. I think it'll generally just trade up. Once it gets to there, then you know some of the big players may try and manipulate the market a bit more. But at the moment, like we don't see any real severe retraces uh, since again the micro strategy news came out and then Cash Square up and you know now PayPal. It's just generally moving up. I think the whales have probably you know worked out that they can't manipulate the market enough at the moment there's too much uh, people wanting to buy to you know kind of manipulate it for it to really dump and then for them to buy in cheaper it's just not happening at the moment at least in my opinion I, I just don't see that happening so you know 39 firms are just in Dutch uh, 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 yeah alone the Dutch Central Bank that's how many people are coming to them to apply for it <coughs> excuse me throats <coughs> getting a bit built up there with gunk all right so yeah again i see this just continuing to move upwards i don't see any major retracements coming for quite some time i think bitcoin needs to hit its all-time high that's not to say there won't be any retracements i just don't see any big retracements like you know maybe 30 to sort of 40 percent retracements i just don't see any of those coming till yeah 25 maybe 35,000 for bitcoin and look it could be a lot after because once we hit all-time highs then the talk's going to grow and then more businesses are going to try and jump in the smaller ones that haven't really been paying attention and even the bigger ones that didn't pay any attention and then you know the last part to all of this is the retail FOMO so once the everyday Joes kind of hear about it not the people who are really out there you know doing real good investigative work I guess you could say on you know what's good to invest in they're just yeah basically hear the news uh, and jump in when retail FOMO happens that's when things are really going to start to pump and uh, it'll just get crazy there'll be some retail early and then that will just start to grow and grow and grow and there's more money in the retail sector than most people would think uh, again people would just jump out there people who aren't even really investors they're just going to be you know sitting at a pub or at a friend's house and they're going to say have you heard about bitcoin yeah, it was 20,000, you know, like six months ago, and now it's up at, you know, let's just say 56,000, 60,000. You should get in and buy some. And so, guess what they're going to do? They're going to run out and buy some. And it could be even much higher prices than that. It's, it's hard to say. But once that retail kicks in, whew, things are going to move very, very fast. And if you were here in 2017, uh, you would know what I mean, particularly sort of October onwards, September. You know, Bitcoin was moving, and you can go back and look at the charts to have a look at that. But really, sort of October, November, December, it was just flying. Absolutely, you know, it was doubling prices and things like that. So interesting. Now, let's go over and have a look at the market. Right, so the market is down. You know, that's to be expected. We had a pretty good pump. 
Bitcoin got down to, I think, 14,000, sort of 300. And again, we're up around sort of 16,000. So that's a bit of fluctuation from sort of 15,900 down to 14,300. Now we're back to sort of 14,900, you know, almost 15,000. You know, you could round it up and really say that it's 15,000. We'll have to wait and see. It is Sunday. You know, have we had the retracement that we generally get on weekends? Maybe we have. Uh, maybe we haven't, and it's still yet to come, and it could come Monday morning. You know, it's just hard to say. No one really knows. Uh, I think we've probably had the retracement, and we'll probably go up. But hey, you know, we'll have a look in a couple of days whether I was right or wrong. Let's have a look for movers. What's the big movers? All right, Aave continues to move. Synthetics Network uh, is flying, and... You know, I don't want to brag, but I just about picked that perfectly. I didn't buy at that price because I wasn't 100% sure, but geez, it nearly pinged right off where I said it was. It dropped a little bit lower, a few cents, well, more than a few cents, almost sort of 15 cents lower than what I thought it would, but it is rocketed back up. And so I bought it $3.01. It made it down to $2.49. I said it'd probably bounce around $2.60. So I was a few cents off, uh, you know, 11, 12 cents uh, and has just rocketed back up. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. But really, other than those, it's all single digit sort of moves at the moment. Things are a bit stagnant, but let's have a look at losses. There's probably going to be a couple. Well, there we go. Reserve token really took a hit. Compound, oh, Uniswap taking a big hit. But look, it's still up 12% over the seven days. So energy web token, but again, still up. This is just the last 24 hours. And this is coins just, you know, retracing a little bit from the massive gains that they've made uh, and more so over the last couple of days, really. Ren, again, so it's still up 1.9%, but in the last 24 hours down 10%. Band protocol, what do you do? Still up 20% uh, over the sort of seven days, so not too bad. And Yearn Finance, again, God, that got down to 9,000, I think 800, and yeah, obviously has made a move. And again, it's pulled back a little bit. This was up around 14,000, so yeah, kicking myself that I didn't get in on it, but you know, what can you do? You can't get, on, get in on all of them. All right. So just having a look at the synthetics, as I said, I was talking about it back here and it was sort of ranging in here and I said, look, I expect this to go lower, but I was hoping that it would bounce and go back up. So I bought at around about $3.01. So I was around about here uh, where I bought because this candle was still like this, but it had pushed back up. So I was like, all right, I'll buy it at here and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. What can you do? And again, it dropped down. There was my line. I said around about sort of $2.60, $61. I thought it would bounce. It dropped down to $2, there we go, about 46 So yeah, I was about $0.15 cents off. And then, again, it's just rocketed back up. So I was, I'm was, i still pretty happy. I didn't pick the exact bottom. I don't need to. You know, I just have to be there about $3 and it dropping down to $2.40 and now being up at uh, $4. You know, I've done a right. I've made a, a dollar on uh, every synthetics that I bought. And I didn't buy that many. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot of money, unfortunately, and I split it between a few different things. But looking strong, and there hasn't been a pullback yet, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see. I think there's a chance that Synthetics Network, excuse me, I'm full of wind at the moment. Uh, uh, I think this could move up fairly quickly and start to get back up to here before we see any major retracements. No guarantees. Look, it might only make it to about here, might make it to about here before we have a retracement, and I mean a sort of you know a reasonable one of maybe 10 percent or something like that uh but you know we'll wait and see maybe it starts tomorrow but i think synthetics network is going to start to uh make up all these losses fairly quickly this is a coin that i'm super bullish on and a platform that i really like and i think this is yeah it's been one of my best movers since i got into it and still is and the reason i'm going against usdt is because it's outperforming uh, Bitcoin, it's outperforming Ethereum, at least for me, uh, in the t time that I've been in it. So, uh, you know, comparing it to Bitcoin, there's no real point when it's outperforming it. If something's underperforming, then I'll generally uh, compare it to Bitcoin or Ether, whatever its nearest pair is. So this is doing pretty good. Now look, likewise, Ethereum I do off the US dollar because Ethereum uh, has outperformed Bitcoin since I got in. I'm not saying outperformed it for the year, just since I've got in. Uh, and it's look, its chart looks very similar to Bitcoin. 
And again, I said, geez, I was hoping for it to, you know, bounce here. I thought it might roll over and go down to sort of 330-ish, down around about here. Uh, but look, bounced right off it uh, and blew above $400. And look, it was way up at $470. So let's have a look. What kind of retracement did it have? Now, we don't like to count the wicks too much, but look, they are part of part of it. So there we go. We had a 10% retracement uh, from its kind of top. So yeah, that's pretty good considering this is the move though. So let's see how much uh, Ethereum moved from the low to the high, which is around about here. So that was a 24% move in one, two, three, four days. Uh, so a 10% retracement, completely understandable. And look, I think you know, Ethereum is just getting started. I think it's got a long way to go. ETH 2.0 is obviously starting, I think, December 1st or something like that. Uh, the contracts are open. You can send your uh, you can send your ETH to the contract now, but the staking rewards won't start until, I think, December 1st. So that was kind of bullish news, and that's played into that. But I think it's got a long way to go. I think Ethereum will outperform Bitcoin uh, in this cycle and possibly going into the future but you know we'll have to wait and see no one really knows that that's just me taking what I like to call or consider an educated guess now last but not least so again we see this pump retracement and now we're just running sideways a little bit you know waiting to see what the day is going to do this is uh, Sunday morning over in the States uh, and this is Sunday evening here in Australia so Bitcoin and again, something very similar. You know, we had a spinning top there. Whenever you see a candle like that, you know, it's hesitation in the market. Uh, and that would have been a good indicator that we were going down. Uh, and obviously it did go down. But now again, we're just kind of sitting flat. But it's early in the day over in the States. So it's late in the evening here in Australia. But the bigger markets, uh, you know, is where most of this volume and things will come from. So China, Europe, USA and things like that. So this is almost a spinning top at the moment, uh, but it's pretty early and it's pretty thick already. So we'll have to wait and see where it opens and closes. But for me, if I was into leverage trading and things, if I saw something like that, I would generally immediately short. This generally means indecision. And look, it doesn't always guarantee that it's going down, but yeah, quite often uh, it does. But look, perfect example here, spinning top didn't go down. Uh, spinning top didn't go down. Spinning top did go down. Spinning top went up. So yeah, and again, almost a spinning top uh, and a big move there. So there's no guarantees, but yeah, from what I've seen a lot of the time, and you know, I've already showed most of the time it goes up here on this very small graph, but a lot of the time in my experience when I see this, uh, there's gonna be a pullback and particularly if it comes after a really big sort of move like this. If you get a spinning top after something that's come down for a while, it's probably more likely to go up. But once you've had a big move uh, and you see a spinning top like that, it's indecision, it's more likely to go down. All right, well, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hit that like, subscribe button. I really do appreciate that. Want to get my videos out there. And I'll see you next time.